Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. This lecture is regarding the basics of forwards and futures contracts, two of the very important risk management tools which come under the category of derivatives markets. The lecture is very basic in nature uh, and it is meant for those who want a foundational understanding between the two types and what is their purpose. So what we learn in this lecture, the basics of a forward contract, the basics of a futures contract, what is a mark to market principle, which is relevant for the futures, and how forwards and futures they differ in pricing, and what is the concept of convergence of spot and futures prices. Both of the contracts, forward and futures, they are risk management tools and they fix a price in advance of a transaction so as to insulate one from the adverse price movements. Let's take a start from the basics of a forward contract. It's a contract and whenever there is a contract we have to understand that it must be between two parties. So it's an agreement between a buyer and a seller in which the buyer agrees to take delivery of something at a specified price at the end of a designated period of time. Likewise, the seller agrees to make delivery of something at a specified price and at the end of a designated period of time. So it's a very basic contract between a buyer and a seller but what needs to be understood is that the terms and conditions are set in advance of the transaction. The price at which the parties agree to transact in future is called the forward price. And we usually denote the forward price with capital K. The designated date at which the parties must transact is called the settlement date or the delivery date and the something that the parties agree to exchange is known as the underlying. So these are the terms which are used in understanding of forward and futures contracts. So a very basic example to understand the contract or the characteristics which we have studied. Suppose there is a forward contract where the underlying to be bought or sold is asset XYZ and the settlement is three months from now. Assume that B buys this forward contract and S sells this forward contract, which simply means that B is the buyer of this asset XYZ and S is the seller of this asset. The price at which they agree to transact in the future is which is the forward price K. So 100 is the forward price. At the settlement date, S will deliver asset XYZ to B and B will give 100 rupees to S, which is the forward price. So what basically happens in a forward contract, I will show you with the help of a very basic example. We will consider two parties to a contract. So let's assume we have a Pakistani firm and we have another firm in US. So we assume that this firm residing in Pakistan has made some exports to US and the US needs to pay $1,000. So $1,000 are due on US firm, but these $1,000 are to be paid after three months. Let's assume that the current dollar rate in Pakistan is 100 rupees. That means one US dollar is equal to 100 rupees. The manager of this Pakistani firm is fearful 
of the worth of these thousand dollars which he will be receiving after three months the fear is that it is possible that these thousand dollars may be worth less than what they are today so how can he overcome this fear or how can he overcome this risk he can enter into a forward contract with his bank today that I will be selling $1,000 to you three months from now at a specified price. That means he is fixing the price of these $1,000 today. Let's assume to be rupees 101 per US dollar. So he has locked this price in advance of receiving this payment. Let's assume that after three months, now the dollar has decreased in the open market and the new rate after three months is now 98 rupees per US dollar. So we can see the manager has gained from this transaction. A dollar which is worth 98 in the market can now be sold at 101 thereby having a profit of three rupees per dollar and since the manager is receiving one thousand dollars so his total profit after multiplying it with thousand is three thousand rupees so this is how forwards can help us in mitigating or hedging our risk against adverse movements in prices in this example the us dollars which are 1000 these are the underlying k is the forward price and three months is the settlement date or the delivery date let's move on to the second contract which is the futures contract and which is very much similar to a forward contract. Like a forward contract, a futures contract is also a legal agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a certain time in future for a certain price. But where do they part is that whereas forwards trade in OTC in over-the-counter market, futures trade on organized exchanges. So this is the major difference between the two contracts besides others which are not the point of discussion for this lecture the major difference between these two types of contracts is that forwards are tradable in otc or on over the counter market whereas futures are traded on organized exchanges just like stock market the price is known as the futures price and it is denoted with capital f whereas in forward contract it was known as the forward price and the asset is still known as the underlying so these are some of the basics of a futures contract let's move on to a very important concept related to futures which is mark to market principle now before that there is one thing which i would like to share regarding uh, the forward contract and their pricing so let me take you back to the previous slide when we were discussing this example between the two firms, one which was residing in Pakistan and the other was in US. There we said that the manager of this Pakistani firm, he locked a price with his bank at rupees 101. This K, this was fixed. Now in forward contract, when a price is fixed, it remains the same throughout the life of the contract, which means if this contract was for three months so throughout the lifetime of this three month this contract price will never change it will remain at 101 however this is not the case when we talk about futures since futures they trade on organized exchanges just like stock market so their contract price it keeps on changing on a daily basis the investor he has to open an account with his broker just like any other investor who normally trades in a stock market, he has to open an account with his broker. So in futures contract, investor also has to open an account with a broker and his account is credited as well as debited 
based on the profit and losses which he experiences as the daily price of the futures contract that changes. I'll clarify all these points with the help of a very simple example. So we'll take two contracts uh, in order for to differentiate between them. One I will be taking as a forward contract and the other will be the futures contract. So let's assume that I enter into a forward contract to buy an asset XYZ and the price that I lock in this contract is rupees 100 and I further assume that it's a four day contract just to keep things simple. Now after four days I have to compare my locked price with the spot price of that time in order to see whether I did profit or did I lose. So let's say after four days the spot price of the same asset in the market is rupees 120. So we denote spot price with S. So an asset which is worth 120 in the market now, I can buy it at rupees 100 because I already fixed a price four days ago. So apparently I received or I gained a profit of 20 rupees which is 120 less 100 that gives me 20. Let me write here after four days so as to avoid confusion. So this spot price of 120 is after four days. Now let's take a futures contract and Again, I keep these assumptions the same that I am buying an asset XYZ. And my futures price, which I locked today, is rupees 100. And again, it's a four day contract. Now, according to mark to market principle, this futures price will keep on changing throughout this four day maturity. Unlike in forward contract, where it was fixed throughout the life of the contract, which was four day. So when futures price changes and we say that derivative instruments, they lock a price. So it doesn't make sense that where is the fixed part when we say that futures price, it keeps on changing on a daily basis. So let's see what does it mean that if futures price keeps on changing and still the price is fixed. So how does it happen? So I call this futures price, which I fixed today, rupees 100 as F0. And then I call the next four prices as F1, F2, F3 and F4. Since the futures price it changes on daily basis, so I must have daily prices. So I denoted them with one, two, three, and four. So let's say the next day futures price is now rupees one zero three. Now, as a buyer, this is an apparent profit of rupees three. This is because if I were to enter into contract on this day. I would have to fix a price 103 which is greater than 100. That means I did contract one day earlier so I saved 3 rupees. That means my account will be credited with 3 rupees on first day. On second day let's say the price decreased to 101. Now based on previous price I lost two rupees. So my account will be debited by two rupees. Let's say on day three, the futures price again went up to 102. So based on the previous day, I gained plus one. And before writing F4, I will also have to clarify one more point, which is the concept of convergence of spot and futures price. 
Now, what this concept means actually is that no matter what the price of futures contract be on any single day, it has to be equal to spot price on maturity. That means the futures price may be greater than or less than the spot price on any day, but the two prices have to be equal on maturity, at least theoretically, if not practically. This is because if the futures and spot prices are not equal on the last day of the maturity of the futures contract, so people will try to exploit profitable opportunities. If the contract is maturing on the last day and spot price is less than futures price, so everyone will try to buy the asset in the spot price and immediately sell in the futures price in order to gain from the transaction, which is known as arbitrage. For instance, if the spot price of an asset is 10 and futures price is 12, so people will immediately try to buy the asset at 10 and sell it at 12, thereby making a two rupees profit. Likewise, if the spot price is greater than futures price, in this situation, people will start doing short selling, where you sell an asset at a higher price and then buy it back at a lower price. So if spot price is 12, and futures price is 10 so again you can have a two rupees profit by selling the asset in the spot market at 12 and then buying back at 10 again making plus two so due to this buying and selling behavior of arbitrageurs or investors the two prices will have to come in equilibrium so as long as there are discrepancies between the two prices on the last day these investors and arbitrageurs will keep on exploiting the arbitrage. So in order to remove these profitable opportunities, the two prices have to converge on the last day of the futures trading. Now coming back to our example. Now there we took a spot price of 120. Now since spot price is same for forward and futures, so we can use the same 120 rupees in this example. So based on the convergence principle of spot and futures prices, we can say that the futures price on fourth day has to be 120 because spot price on that day is 120 as well. So we can write here 120. Now based on the previous day, I did a profit of 18 rupees. Let me clean this part. Now our futures contract has matured. But if I net my pluses and minuses, I get 20 profit on a net basis, which is exactly equal to the 20 that I gained in a forward contract. So even though the futures prices are changing on a daily basis, the payoffs are exactly equal to that of the forward contract. The difference is, is that in forward contract, the profit and loss is calculated as a whole. Whereas in futures market, the profit and loss is divided among different days. But the net effect of both the transactions are same. But this will only happen when the assumption which we have followed is existing, which is the convergence of spot and futures prices on the last day of the futures trading. So these are the basics of forward and futures contract and their mechanics. I have tried to keep this lecture as simple as possible for those who are not very much acquainted with the concepts of forwards and futures. If you have any question, you can post in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer those. Thank you very much.